uh, pretty much 24-7 because, I'll tell you why, because they have no guards. They have no guards. That's why when you're sent to that place, you're pretty much given a death sentence. There is no guards to protect you out there. The buildings are in disrepair. They're just crumbling. Those buildings were built back in the 70s, uh, 50 plus years ago. Nothing has been done to those buildings. They're in disrepair. The infrastructure is just crumbling. The plumbing uh, is, is basically just collapsed. You know, you have no toilets. You have no sinks to wash your face in. They're all broken. I mean, they're there, but they don't work. Um, also, uh, you have holes in the ceiling. When I was in Unit 30, it rained right straight on top of my rack. You have holes in the walls. We had bugs coming there, everything from ants to cockroaches to mice to snakes inside the building. I'm telling you this firsthand because I was there. I know exactly what it's like. I have people there now that uh, I grew up with and, and spent time with in the community. They're there now serving time. So some of them at 29. Governor Tate Reeves has vowed to close Unit 29. I say close Parchman down. There is no justice for anyone who has a family member in Parchman, Mississippi. I tell you right now. They have no guards for any kind of programs. They have school. You can't go because they don't have any guards to take you. You can't even go to the cafeteria and eat because they don't have any guards to take you. You're in a cell 24-7. You're not allowed to go out and exercise or get sunlight because they have no guards. Where is the infrastructure as far as guards go? The protection, civil rights, things you're supposed to be given in there. You're supposed to have the right to clean water, to good food, healthy food. That stuff they feed you is full of carbohydrates. It's nothing but junk. I'm telling you, I was there. I ate it. I know. And also, the water is pitiful. The water is brown. It's dirty. It's full of bacteria and viruses. And I'll tell you, in 2016 and 2017, uh, we had no water. They gave us bottled water, but when they turned it back on, it was just nasty. And I'll tell you what happens down there. Staph infections run rampant in that place. There is no medical care. They do treat you with some ibuprofen, as the lady said before. But I'm here to tell you, in 2016 and 2017, because of that nasty water, a lot of people don't understand staff. You know, it's all over us at all times, and it, and it does colonize in our nose. But also, contaminated water causes staff infections. A lot of people don't understand that, but it does. Yes, yes. And uh, so it ran rapid in 2016 and 2017. I know for a fact I can take my shirt off and show you the... Increasing free people's prison sentences up to 25 years. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. What do you say? I'm gonna go get a picture of it, don't worry. He outside the government mansion, this is the KKK meeting. You're right. He well, protects me, but it's a meeting spot. Yeah, he protects me. Yeah. Yeah. But we as community have known for years, yeah. and they as government have known. And now we're standing up. One of the bills that we want to make sure people do support is Senate Bill 2123. Can y'all say it with me? Shut it down! 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to open it up for others to come up and share their stories. You know, what our young brother just talked about right now, what Cutlass just shared with us, is a reality in some other countries. And unfortunately, we don't know that reality here. In other countries, I know and I've visited and I've seen where people who are currently incarcerated have an opportunity to go home every week. Praise the Lord. Right? Every Lord. week as a way to reintroduce them into society so that they can be productive. Yeah. 
Right. Not only do they get to go home, but they get to begin to work the in their regular clothes. Amen. To make a living to support their families. Yes. And yes, they might have to go back to the prison cell at night, but they get to see their families. Amen. Right? Amen. Until their sentence is over. The United States incarcerates more people than anywhere else in the world. Yes. And we're supposed to be a free country? Yes. Well, Come on. Well. Teach. We have to start to continue and continue to demand some change. Yes. Not only in Mississippi, but everywhere. Yes. We're starting at home. Yes. Right. Yes. Come on up. Who's coming up next? I'm All right. <laughs> Shut it down! Shut, Shut it, it down. down! Shut it 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 down! No! No! Well, that's okay. I don't know how to work this thing anyway. Oh, just, just talking to him. Just talking to him. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, people. I'm not here to preach, or I'm not here to tell two sad stories because I'm a private investigator. And when all this came about, my phone started ringing. I have not slept in almost a month, almost a month, day and night. I have had tears of mothers, children, brothers, fathers, sisters, and loved ones of inmates call me. Amen. I have seen the video of the blood, the gore, the pictures. Yes. I have them on my computer. Yes. I have, have nightmares every single night. My PTSD, and I have PTSD yes. as a veteran, I have PTSD. And I want you to know that there is a way to do this, and we can do this. They have to be voted out. I have in my hand a 50 voter mail-in voter restoration form. Now, as people come out of the prison or go into prison, they are told that they will never be able to vote again. Well, I have a mail-in voter restoration form, and I have plenty, and I urge you to get one. Yeah. Okay. You may not register to vote if you have been convicted in Mississippi State Court of any of the following crimes. Voter fraud, murder, rape, robbery, theft, arson, obtaining money or goods under false pretense, perjury, forgery, embezzlement, bigamy, armed robbery, extortion, felony bad check, felony shoplifting, larceny, receiving stolen property, robbery, t uh, robbery timber lobber, uh, <coughs> excuse me, larceny, Unlaw unlawful taking of a motor vehicle, statutory rate, carjacking, and larceny, under at least a rental agreement. Those are the only ones. Did you hear anything about manslaughter? No. No. Did you hear anything about a drug crime? No. no. Did you hear anything that would stop your neighbor from voting? No. Then I urge you to please take these voter restoration forms. I have the number to the Secretary of State's office. All you have to do is call them and they will send you 50 to each address. And I beg of you to get them and get your family and friends to vote. Amen. Now I have just a little more information for you. Now there's been a lot of misinformation going on about the, the law firm that Jay-Z hired and, and Rock Nation. They are real and they are here. I'm going to give you the name of the law firm that's just right around the corner. It's Marion, Marvel, Bradley, Anderson, and Tardy, LLC. Their phone number is 601-812-6630. The lead attorney is Marcy B. Croft. We have other attorneys, one out of Canton, Lawrence Blackman. We have, then we have Carlos Moore. These are all lawyers that are involved in this. There is no money to be recovered from the state of Mississippi because they have what's called executive immunity. But keep in mind, but keep in mind, each county jail does, and they are insured. So if you have a loved one that was abused in a county jail, Lawrence Blackman has that right now, has a lawsuit against Madison County Jail because of a young lady that was pregnant and she was begged and begged for her medical care she was denied. She is in the ground dead today. Yeah. All right. So I want to, uh, to clear up all this misinformation about Rock Nation. I have the numbers right here. 
but you can directly get in touch with Rock Nation. And they want to hear from you. They are going to each prison, and they are taking testimony and video and getting everything from the inmates. What they do need is the name of the inmates and their inmate number, which is easy to get through the inmate locator. So it's not a problem there. I want to give you these two uh, these phone numbers, and then I'm just going to try to take a break. Mr. James Butler is one of their investigators. His number is area code 347-983-4193. The other one is Mr. B uh, Mr. Michael Burdock. His number is area code 6917-440-0493. I urge you to get in touch with these people and let them represent you because your loved ones deserve better and they do not have to be treated this way. We will shut it down! talking about just 29 that's like putting a band-aid on an open wound camp 20 camp 30 camp 32 and camp 29 was all built in the late 70s by the same company with the same exact design with no oversight now you keep in mind the man that's in that uh, that's fixing to be living in that building over there. Uh -huh. He was the uh, he was the lieutenant governor for eight long right. years, eight and he yeah. he got on TV last week and he said, "Well, the money was allocated to Parchment to MDOC, but it didn't make it down to the bottom where it belonged." Well, let me tell you this. If I was your certified public accountant and I was making sure that your money was going somewhere, which was his job, I would make sure not only did it go to where it was going, I would make sure what was happening with your money. Right. And ladies and gentlemen, that's about all I have to say. Please do step up and get the voter ID, get the voter registration, and let me help you. Help you. Thank you. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Uh, my name is Kwame Shakur. I was currently incarcerated in 2011. Um, when I first got to prison, it was my first time ever going to a jail ever in my life. I had been going to school and whatnot. And um, what ended up happening was I got caught with some guys. They had some drugs, I didn't tell on them. And what ended up happening was I ended up getting charged because it was my car. I went from going to school, graduating from college, to being locked up in a cell 23 hours a day for one mistake, one mistake. I made one mistake in my life. And when I got to jail, the guards, I wasn't used to the guards and they started mistreating me. And I stood up with the brothers and I said, you're not gonna mistreat us. Well, they, they bust me in my head and they threw me in a cell for 23 hours a day. I was in the hole for 30 days, okay? So I'm saying this to tell you the reason why I'm so passionate about what's going on right now, because I've been there. I know how they treat you when the cameras ain't there. I know how they treat you when they think don't nobody care about you. Yeah, right. See what I'm saying? Um, in 1832, there was a man named Henry Berry. He was uh, he was going to the city and he was talking to some people and he was talking about freeing slaves. There was a racist man who was talking about freeing slaves. And, and let me read to you what he said that day. Henry Berry in 1832 said to the people he was talking to in Congress, we have as far as possibly closed every avenue by which light may enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work will be complete. They would be on the level with the beasts of the field and we should be safe. So when you see these these, these prisons, when you see what's going on in this society, this is by design, y'all. Yes. This is by design. They've been trying to keep yes. us. Amen. Did you hear what he said? He said he wants to close the light out. Yes. That's what they doing every time they recreate yes. what's going on. That's what they trying to do in Parchment yes. Prison. Yes. They trying to close the light inside of the prison. Yes. Speak on it. Inside of the men, so they can be on what? The level of the beast, so what? What did he say? Same. So they could be safe. Because they know if you if you if you become intelligent, if you wake your mind up, okay. then they got a problem. Yeah. They got to deal with you. See, this is what happened back in the 70s, in the 60s with the Panthers. This is why they gave us Superfly. This is why they gave us all these, these black exploitation films. This is why they promoted NWA instead of public interest. That's right. Because they want to extinguish the light inside of you. 
They want to extinguish the light that will tell you that you are more than just a beast. Amen. The brothers out here, what do they call themselves when they want to be considered gangster? They say, I'm a savage. I'm a savage. I'm on the level of a beast. I do anything to you. And this is where they want us at. Amen. So for all you brothers and sisters, no matter what color or creed, let's fight this thing. Because we're more than beasts. Shut it down. Shut it down. How y'all doing today? Shut it down. Shut it down. Check it out. I ain't gonna hold y'all a little real long. Speaking for my brother still incarcerated, you know what I'm saying? On these sentences, man. I'm stressing y'all vote. Senate Bill 2123. You know what I'm saying? Free my brothers that been locked up since 94 in between that 2014 range that's doing 85% of their time. A lot of these brothers that need another chance, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here trying to be a positive role model that people deserve another chance. Y'all know the story. I was sentenced to life in prison. I did 19 years in MDOC. So I'm speaking from them brothers for experience, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Speaking from these these situations that brother was describing right there, I done been through that, you know what I'm saying? God made a way for me and brought yes. me out, but he ain't bring me out to be quiet about it, and he ain't forget me, and he ain't bring me out to forget where I came from. So I'm out here every time trying to promote Vote these people out. If these people representing us ain't doing what we need them to do, Amen. vote them out. And hey, I can't help it, man. I don't want to offend none of y'all or nothing. But hey, you know where we from, Mississippi. And man, we got to change our mentality. You know what I'm saying? Look, most of these laws affecting the black people weren't wrote by no black people. Now we got black people in power to change it. We need to change it, man. That's right. Come on. Chicago, and it's like, uh, it's honestly like this everywhere. It's just not Mississippi. It's uh, things that we just have to wake up and realize that we just can't show hatred to a random being that's walking on this earth. We have to be here for all men and all women, and we have to stand strong, and we have to also come together, like rival gangs. I don't know nothing about the gang life, but I, I see it's a lot of hurt going on, and it's a lot of confused kids out here because they don't really know who to follow because all the people that actually started the organizations is not no longer running the organization. So it's like you can't put your time and your energy into something and you're not really knowing what you're putting your time and the energy into because it's bigger than what you think and it's bigger than all of us. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I was only in this cage for an hour. I'm cold and I'm hungry. So imagine these guys in there 24 hours a day. So, you know, like she said, keep fighting. It don't matter that the crowd is not big. You know, just it matter about, it's not the, do the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Give it up for those brothers. That, that was a powerful thing.